The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Dr. John R. Heller was born in Fair Play, South Carolina on February 27, 1905. After receiving a Bachelor of Science degree from Clemson College in 1925, Dr. Heller graduated from Emory University School of Medicine in 1929. He entered public health work as a clinician for the Georgia State Board of Health on a syphilis control project conducted jointly with the Public Health Service. After I'd been at Brunswick for a few months, the senior man left, which meant that I was in charge of this clinic. So I spent a year as director of this clinic doing research as to the best type of drugs that were available commercially from the pharmaceutical companies. Within certain limits, we were able to work out which were the better drugs for this group of patients. And I learned quite a bit. We learned many, many things about the treatment of syphilis, and I saw syphilis in all of its stages, early and late. Dr. Heller joined the U.S. Public Health Service in 1931 and became a commissioned officer in the regular corps in 1934. By 1943, Dr. Heller was appointed Chief of the Division of Venereal Diseases, where he directed venereal disease control during World War II. Being the Chief of the Venereal Disease Division was quite a delightful and stimulating experience in as much as I was able then, as Chief of this activity, to put into effect several ideas which I had for venereal disease control. Chief of these, and the most successful ones of which I'm most proud, is the establishment of so-called rapid treatment centers, or as the phrase implies, centers to which individuals with syphilis and gonorrhea in an infectious state could be sent and treated in order to break the chain of infection. About that time, the May Act was passed. The May Act was an act which made it illegal for any person to practice prostitution in or around an army or service installation. This was administered by the FBI. At the time, Mr. Elliot Ness was Chief of Social Protection. Elliot Ness and I had to work very closely together and with the FBI in this phase of health control, and this was a fascinating and worthwhile experience. Dr. Heller was appointed director of the National Cancer Institute in 1948, a position he found both challenging and rewarding. I had comparatively little knowledge of cancer and no experience in cancer control, but I was interested in it and perfectly willing and anxious to do what I could. So I went in completely green and ignorant in this area and spent the first few months of my assignment beginning in May of 1948 in becoming familiar with the problems of cancer control and the methods. It was quickly apparent that research played a huge part in cancer control and I attempted to give it impetus when I became director of the National Cancer Institute. In 1960, Dr. Heller left the National Institutes of Health to become president and chief executive officer of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center until illness forced his retirement in 1964. In October of that year, Dr. Heller was interviewed for an oral history by the National Institutes of Health where he reflected on his career. Of course, the public health service had changed significantly since I entered it in terms of size, in terms of financial support, and in terms of programs. Instead of being more interested in infectious disease as it was when I first entered, the interest perhaps now is more in the chronic disease field and in general problems of public health, such as medical care and the like, rather than in specific disease entities. I think it's improved. I think it's done a good job. Dr. Heller was inducted into the South Carolina Hall of Fame in 1979, 10 years before his death, for his significant contributions to public health in the early stages of understanding venereal diseases and cancer research in the 20th century. <laughs>